Here we are at ASE Engineering. We're doing some roof rack tests. There's a whole bunch of tests that you have to do for roof racks and we're gonna interview the engineer in a minute. But I've come down for the fun part and that's the destructive testing. We're gonna put 120 kilos on this roof rack, accelerate it with that LS motor at the back here towards that wall until it smashes. And if the 120 kilo stays on the roof rack, we pass. Um, all right, I'll show you the smash, then the interview. So that was the test. And now I thought it'd be a great opportunity to speak to the engineer we work with about all the types of uh, testings involved for roof racks and the standards that apply to roof racks. So introducing Grad from ASE Engineering. Thanks for coming on YouTube with me, Grad. Thank you, Dave. And when we're talking about roof racks that go on our full drives, what are the standards we need to consider um, to be safe having one on our, on our roof? Yes, uh, originally the basic standard is 1235 that only uh, rates roof racks based on static load. Yep. As we know, when car travels, it's exposed firstly to dynamic loads, vibrations. Yep. Secondly, also could be involved in head-on collisions or side collisions. So yep. it's important that other two tests are done as well, not just static tests. All right, so there's a, so there's a static test, yep. uh, a collision a test, test, and vibration test. And a vibration test. Yep. So, in the static test, what's, what do you do to do a static test? Uh, so we apply forces in three directions, longitudinal one, simulating brake, heavy braking. Yes. Then we do cornering, uh, providing force lateral direction, yep. and a vertical up and down as well. So three different tests are done okay. within the static tests. Um, so that's the static test. Next is the vibration, vibration test. Vibration test, that's correct. How do you do so, that? So you might find that, test, that uh, roof rack that is tested uh, statically Mm -hmm. will fail developing cracks yeah. and that's another test, vibration test to two million cycles yeah. which is typically two weeks of continuous testing up and down that it checks if anywhere else in that sort of system there is a weak point and will develop crack which will progress and uh, eventually turn into a failure. That, uh, yeah, that's going to show up anything. So that's for like off-road use essentially. That's off road, yes. Gotcha. Off -road. Um, and then the last test, which is the one we just got to see, which was great. Mm -hmm. I love it when there's like a, mm -hmm. things going bang. Yeah. It would have been more spectacular if like the roof rack fell apart, but not great for roof rack sales. So <laughs> <laughs> thankfully the test looked good, but what was involved in that test? Maybe next time we can bring the opposition roof rack and we can make the, the things to happen. I'll just drill a few holes in it first or something, yeah. <laughs> exactly. And, but uh, what, uh, so what, what, why it's done actually is uh, very popular in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, in city conditions, if somebody slams brakes in front of you or turns in front of you, but cars are involved in a large number of real car collisions. Yeah. And previous two tests, static and cyclic, they wouldn't detect how strong the roof rack is in collision condition. This city tests, yes. tests exactly that. It's uh, typically done at 48 kilometers per hour into a solid wall, which is equivalent to two vehicles mm -hmm. traveling 48 kilometers per hour from opposite direction. Okay. And it's very important that there is no flying projectiles because as we know, windscreen of cars are not particularly strong. And mm -hmm. if you have some heavy load on the top of the roof rack and travels at 48 kilometers per hour and your car stops due to collision, if unrestrained or inappropriately restrained on the roof, that load will go forward and go to some windscreen and can induce some severe injuries or even death. Yeah, and what, what we were talking off camera before about the G-forces applied, mm -hmm. so it's 20 G, so if you've got one kilo on top of your roof rack, that turns into 20 kilos when it hits. Yeah. If you've got 100 kilos, 200 kilos, that's a two ton, of two, two ton, thousand kilograms. Yeah, that's two ton of force hitting whatever you're hitting. So I guess if you're strapping stuff to your roof rack, just keep that in mind, 20 Gs is 20 times the weight at, at 48 kilometers an hour. All right, so um, from me just observing, it, nothing fell off, so that looked good. Mm -hmm. um, we'll talk more specifically about the, the dash roof racks that we have been testing. So the first static test, how did it perform? Uh, very well, hardly any deformation in there. Excellent. And it's probably get 40, 50% spare capacity. 
Excellent. So the number, so we did it uh, at 120 kilos? 120 kilos capacity. All right, so this doesn't mean you can put 120 kilos on your roof rack though. I just want to clear that up. The roof limit of the Y62 Patrol is 100 kilos and the roof rack weighs 38 kilograms. So 62 is the number, ironically, that you can put on a Y62 um, dash roof rack. Um, for the vibration test that we did, that, am I right in saying that was also done at 120 kilograms? Uh, yeah, that's correct, 120 kilograms at uh, 2 million cycles. Yes, so is it fair to say then, even in off-road conditions, this would be rated at, you know, you could put 62 kilos of luggage on the roof. Safely, correct, yeah. So it's, there is no um, penalty for off-road uh, for the dash roof rack, fantastic. And when we did our city test and hit the wall at um, 48 kilometers an hour, what weight was on top of there as well? Uh, also 120 kilograms okay. in total times 20 then a lot, total load. So I'm really happy about this. We've, we've uh, tested it and we've exceeded it. Uh, we only really need to achieve 62 kilograms. We did it at 120 kilograms. That doesn't mean you can do that with your roof rack, but it makes me very confident um, putting these out into the market that they're not gonna break, they're not gonna hurt someone, it's not gonna fall off your roof, uh, but still stay within the guidelines. All right, anything else we need to consider there? And only two people probably wouldn't know what is 62 kilograms, so they may slightly overload it. So it's good to have good safety margin in there, just in Absolutely. case. Absolutely. Well, it makes me sleep better at yeah, night, exactly. I'll say that much. Correct. All right, thank you. This is our roof rack test. Um, you can find all this stuff on dashoffroad.com.au, and we'll see you next week on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Goodbye. Thank you. You're welcome.